So here's one of the pieces. And I'm going to just pour out right onto my freezer paper with the glossy side up. Try to always make sure you have glossy side up because things won't stick to the gloss. Where if you have just the straight up paper side, the paper side will stick to things and you'll hate life. And this is a good base coat to do pretty much for whatever um, finish you're going to do on your piece, except for, of course, glaze. You would not use this to base coat your items if you're going to be doing ceramic glazing. Um, because this would burn away and ruin your glazes that were on top. But this is all you do. Makes it very simple, very quick. You're basically doing two coats at one time. And I suppose if you didn't want to use black, you could use any other color that you wanted to. Um, but I would suggest using a darker color than white. That way you can see where you've painted, you know you haven't missed anything, you can work it into all the nooks and the crannies and you, you, you can tell that you've painted it. And see, I can, I can tell that this hasn't been mixed up properly, but I needed to get some, some room in the bottle to be able to finish mixing it properly, because now it's just basically a light gray. You want it to be th a thick enough coat that it coats everything and gets into the nooks and crannies, but doesn't fill up the nooks and crannies because you want to be able to see that definition. So I'm going to be doing this for all of the pieces in the Halloween Village. I am not going to videotape every single basing, base coating every single piece. That's just redundant, but I will finish showing you guys this one. And if this is going to be something that you're going to put into a um, competition, you want to make sure that you do paint your bottom. Um, I've never put anything into a competition. I've been told I should, but I just, I don't know. Um, but I've been told that if you do put your pieces into competition, you have to have the bottoms painted. So make sure you do your bottoms and that's why it's very important that you are on the glossy side and not the paper side because you don't want your pieces to stick. Now let's take a quick look. Alright, I've gotten enough out of here but I don't know if you guys can tell, but that's not dark enough down in there. 
not really. So I'm going to put a little bit more of the black acrylic in here. And I'm going to shake it up. And then I'll call my base coat done. And ready to use for the rest of it. This goes a long way. Covers quickly. And um, get your piece ready to take the colors and the washes and everything that you're going to do. Um, also, later on, there'll be some pieces that I'll be making that are not ceramic and this will be a coat that you put on to protect them uh, so that they hold up better to the, the ceramics and everything you're going to be putting it through. Alrighty, I'm going to call that done and I'll see you folks later. Okay. I've gotten all my pieces base coated. I have them all up on a shelf up here. Don't think I really need to show each and every one that's base coated. Um, but what I am going to show is when I start a project, I try to get an idea for colors um, just to kind of use as like a, a template, but not necessarily a, I have to do it this way kind of, kind of thing. So I went online and I found some pictures of a Victorian era mansion, candy shop, church just a larger house, an older building, and then some buildings that are overgrown, and then like the look of a town that's been abandoned. So I will keep this piece of paper close at hand to kind of give me an idea of what colors I'm gonna go with, um, and about where I'm gonna paint them, but I may not stay true to what these are colored. So I will have those over there because I wanna start with vibrant colors um, because once you put the wash on, that's gonna dull everything down, grime it up, and uh, just make it a little bit not uh, obviously not so bright but um, so yeah I will be starting most likely with I think I'm just gonna go with the funeral parlor and I'm gonna paint it kind of in that two-tone green with the reddish roof um, because I feel like it fits that house and the colors kind of nicely um, I forgot to get my paint brushes ready before I signed on, but that's okay. Clean these other ones up and get them out of the water. You shouldn't leave your paint brushes laying around in the water. That ruins them. And of course, I don't follow my own suggestions. <laughs> Now I get to pick out some paint brushes that I like to use. You know, people say that there's certain brushes for certain things. I'm sure there are. I haven't gone to a class for it or anything. So I just kind of 
use the brushes how I like, the size that I like, and the shape that I like, and that I think it's going to do a good job. Alright, so, two-tone green, I am going to be using uh, one that's called Green Tea, and True Green, and they are not the same brand. And that doesn't matter. Does not matter. And this tea green is probably getting a little bit old. So it's a little bit thick, and if you want to add a, you know, if you have a little bit of thick paint, you could add a little bit of water to it. But when I said I shouldn't have done that, I used dirty water, so it made my paint a little dirty. But that's okay. I got my brush all gunked up, so now the paint's not going on nice and smooth. And when you're first painting, don't be don't be afraid if you're getting it on like the different little um, details because you'll be going back and painting over that. And if it really bothers you, you could have some um, wet wipes around and just wipe it back. Biggest thing is, is you want to get the color on. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You'll hear me say time and time again, there is no wrong way to art. I like to quote Bob Ross. Maybe I quote him right, maybe I quote him wrong, but there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. When you're first going to put on the main color, you're not worrying about the details, you're just worrying about getting the color on the piece. So you want to start with the most amount of color. So like my biggest amount of color is going to be this light green. That's almost a yellow. And I'm just going in making sure it's all beautiful. I don't want it to look too distressed right now. So we're kind of painting it as if it was a brand new house with a fresh paint job and all of that.
Okay. That's all of the main color. And I think I'm either going to have to find some thinner to add into this or throw this away. Unfortunately. I think I'm going to do the roof next. Because it's the next main amount, next big amount of color. And I'm going with a barn red for the roof. And this might need to take a couple of coats because it is a paint that's a little bit of a thinner paint, a little bit lower quality. That's okay. It's what I have on hand, so it's what I'm using. It's the color I want, so it's what I'm using. And I'm just painting in a fashion where it gets the color and works it into all of the grooves. And this shows me that I missed a little spot right there. Not a big deal. I can go back and get that. I know I probably just blocked the view, but all I'm doing is 
is just painting on the color in the area that I found that I missed. back and put on another coat just to get the color a little bit more where I want it. Something to remember when you're painting is most times paint dries darker than what it goes on. So it's always good to make sure you give it a chance to dry between coats because you might end up liking how it looks and not need to do a second coat. already. When you're putting your paint out on the palette, remember, a little goes a long way. You can always put out more, but you can't put it back in. That's how it's looking so far. I'm liking it. Trying to decide where I'm going from here. Hmm. 
I don't think that's a dark enough green. I need darker. That'll be better. And all I did was I just took a regular paper towel and wiped away the wet paint. That's the other good thing about base coating is if you make a mistake, I will always air quote the word mistakes. Um, you can erase those mistakes. I will say having the right size tip on a paintbrush makes a difference. You wouldn't want to use a big old tip for that small little area. That is one thing that I do with my paintbrushes, is I try to use the right size brush. should have done something with the windows before I did the detail on the windows. <laughs> I just put the red in my green. Okay, I don't know when that cut out, um, but I'm going to do a dry brush technique, which is you put some paint on your brush and then you take it off of your brush and you want very little to come out and then you're going to build it up slowly on your windows and what I'm using is a little bit of turquoise and a lot of white. And I have very, very little paint on the brush. When you test it on A paper towel or your hand you should get almost nothing off onto the paper on your hand or the paper towel and then when you go to have to reload don't reload from the middle of your paint palette or 
or paint blob reload from out here where you wiped off. See, that was a bit too much paint right there. But that's okay, I'll work with it. When you're, when you're dry brushing, you're typically going across the grain and getting the, the paint to stay on the ridges, but I'm using it as a way to smush up the, smush up, no, not smush up, um, cloud up the windows. So I'm kind of just dabbing inside the window panes. This is why I waited to do the green around the windows because I'm going to be sloppy sloppy. Nope, that's too much. Ooh, that kind of made a neat effect. I don't know if it shows up on camera or not, but it almost looks like there's a little figure in the window. Okay, I'm going to finish up all these little details and I'll come back and wrap it up. Okay, so I have finished all of the dark green, all the little details. Now I'm going to be painting the chimney and the brickwork around the sides and I've already got a lot of this brick red on there so I don't want to use too much more of that because that'll kind of detract from where I have put the brick red so I'm going to be doing a couple different layers and I am going to be I have two bottles of barn red out here I am going to do a base coat of barn red but then I'm going to layer some brown and some sandstone onto it to kind of give it um, some more stone like quality Red did I use? Hmm. 
this one's really runny. So, just switch it up. There we go. All right, so a base coat. of the brick red. And I'm not going to do it real thick. Whoops. Or even um, I'm not going to do two coats of the brick red because I don't care that some of the black is going to th show through because that's going to help with the layer of color. Okay, I'm going to pause this, and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I've got the bricks pre-primed pre in the brick red and the stones. I'm going to use some just straight up brown. And then I'll be using some sandstone. Um, I'm thinking about doing the stonework a little bit different than what the bricks are. So I'm going to be putting some other colors on there. And it's going to look a little weird, but it will all look good in the end. I gotta get a navy blue, midnight blue will work, and I'm thinking a darker green than what I already have out. Thicket. One thing to make sure is that your layer, when you're going to be dry brushing, is that your layers are dry because if they're still wet like down in here when you go to dry brush you'll smear the colors and that will just look awful now something I want to do with the house while I'm waiting for the rest of these colors is there's areas where the boards have kind of broken away so I'm going to take some sandstone and I'm going to load up my brush and then wipe it off and then test it. You want very little to no paint being able to come out onto your hand when you test it or onto a paper towel. And I'm just going to go in and build up. tan in those areas where it looks like the board has broken away. Alrighty then. So let us say, what I'm doing is I'm going in and putting some more of a cream color in the area of the wood that's a little bit more distressed, a little bit more chipped away. <coughs> Excuse me. And you'll see why I do this in the last step that I do to this house. But when you 
have wood that's been chipped away, you end up with the more natural tan wood color exposed. And because it's two very light colors getting worked together, I'm not worrying about dry brushing. I'm just actually putting the color where I want it. Because I need it to be just a little darker than what dry brushing would get it. gotten all the tan worked into the areas that I want to work in. I still got a little bit of wet going on up here on the bricks, so I'm going to work down here on the cobblestone area. And this is where it's going to seem a little bit weird because I'm going to use a very dark green. This one's called Thicket. going to use some midnight blue. I don't know why I felt like seeing that, but I did. And then also some pavement, which is a really dark gray. And I'm going to end up using a couple different paintbrushes so that I don't have to keep cleaning my brush. But I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick out randomly different stones to paint these three colors. Now, if you wanted to, you could have, um, instead of base coating them in the brick red like I did with the, just carrying the brick red over, you could base coat in um, a black or a dark gray. And then you'd have a few less stones to have to paint in. For this smallest stones, I should have maybe used a smaller brush, but oh well. I'll just have a couple stones the same colors together, and that's okay. And it's okay if some of the color bleeds over onto the other rock, because when you're looking at rocks in nature, they are not one solid color. And if you overpaint one, you can always go back and paint a different color on top of it. I'm going to put some sandstone color in here too. That way I don't have. Did I just change my color? Yeah, okay. That way I don't have a whole bunch of dark, 
dark rocks together. But you know, this is a cobblestone, so lots of different stones are used. Lots of different colors will show up in cobblestone. And yes, by the time you're done, this is going to look really comical, but that's, that will change at the end, I promise. Yep, didn't like that, so I just wiped it away. See how easy that was? I just, I didn't like it, so I just wiped it away. I didn't make a mistake. I just didn't like it. bricks. I'm going to do a brown. And I'm going to put it on a little heavier than a dry brush. not quite as heavy as a straight up face coat. Because I want a little bit of that red to show through the brown.
Okay, now I'm not cleaning off my brush. I'm gonna leave the dark brown in there. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna get some of that tan. And then I'm gonna pull it out. Getting my brush ready for dry brush. And then I'm just gonna kind of feather on the lighter brown. Okay, now I'm going to go get more tan because now it's going to be more of just the tan color that I'm going to feather on. Just catching the ridges. And when I feel like I'm running out, I don't go back to my main little pool. I come down here where I dragged some of the color out of my brush to load up. when I feel like I need more paint in the brush. almost forgot to finish that sentence. Okay, and that's how I've done the chimney. So about four-ish different colors on there. And if you see, there's still like a really sharp line right here. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the, this isn't so even type thing because the wash that we're gonna do in this last step basically takes care of all of that. Okay, this last step is the messiest step. This is where you're going to end up with your hands being all black. There's going to be puddle around here, so it's going to be very important that you are on your shiny side of your freezer paper. And then this is where the black wash that I showed in an episode or two ago, how to make, this is where this is black wash and or the brown wash is going to come in handy. Now my colors have kind of settled to the bottom. Now remember, if you made your wash how I showed you, you're going to end up building up pressure in here because of the finished jet dry that's in here. So be very careful, like I can feel the pressure building up so I'm going to let that sit for a minute. And then same thing here. And actually, I'm thinking about weathering the roof a little bit with a little bit of uh, tan to just make the roof look a little bit more faded, even with the final wash that we're going to do. So I'm going to do some dry brushing. So again, I dipped my brush into my little spot, brought it out, dragged out, made sure not much came off. And then I'm just going to kind of work from the top down.
because the sun would fade things from the top down. So I'm not going to really move my piece much. I'm not going to lift it up like I have been. And see I had a little too much on my brush right there. I'm just going to work it down. And I figured it's probably going to be a little bit more weathered on the corner here because of rain, because of the chip out of the board there. Kind of the same here on these corners. Okay, that should have given me enough time to do the wash. I'm going to open this slowly. Okay. And now I'm just going to kind of this dribble as it pleases. And oh I'm almost off camera. Sorry guys. Let's move that a little bit. Okay, there is a big huge puddle that this is sitting in now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry as it did, as natural, and then once it's dry I'm going to take some of the brown, brownish red wash and wash over it to give it that much more of a weathered effect. And actually I'm going to put some more there. Anywhere that you think it would be more weathered, you could put more on. Okay, I will be back once this is dry, and we will do the red-brown wash. Okay. 
Okay, the black wash is basically dry. Um, I still have a few areas where it pulled really thickly, so it's still kind of wet there. And I had taken my brush and kind of wiped it away and, and worked it out a little bit more. And it's okay if it's still a little wet there. Um, because I'm going to be painting on the red stain. And just areas where I feel it needs to be a little bit more grimy. Even though I'm painting it on, I still kind of want it to be wet enough that it kind of flows down on its own. And that's why you make a wash with a flow aid so that it will do the running down on its own. Ooh, we got a little bit of thunder going on. And then on the sides where it just kind of streaked down, I want to go and put in a bit more weathering. You don't want to get rid of your streaks completely. And then also, this is where you tone down that crazy coloring on the cobblestone part. And if you don't like the look of the reddish brown wash, just do this with the black wash. It's alright. And I want to kind of make the red brown kind of hang out in the areas where the um, where the wood's been chipped so that it weathers a little differently I didn't write funeral parlor on the funeral parlor sign um, just because I felt like those letterings would have been worn away by now anyway. And don't forget to do the windows because the windows would have grime and build up. from over the years as well. But this is why I said don't worry about those defining lines because the washes will take care of all that. Look at that grime sticking in there. Beautiful. Beautifully ugly. I think I just want the roof to be a little bit more grimy, so I'm just adding some more from the pool, because the roof would get the most weathering, and the chimney. Yep. 
this this is the messiest part now I want to put a lot of grime right up here behind the chimney and I think I want just a little bit more black on this side with a little bit more of the red just because it's such a flat boring surface not that many people are going to see it because it's more of the back of the house but that way if somebody looks closely it's done and that is one house start to finish guys all right, so that is the funeral parlor, all grimed up and ready to rock and roll. I will probably add on some more details, um, like maybe some vines growing, maybe some cobwebs flowing, um, maybe some moss. But that will be later after I have all of the other buildings painted and finished.